I've never used a ladder like that before. So there's a size comparison. Come Ruben, show off your suit. Oh, I've just foreshadowed. Why did I say that? We really need to get out of these Breaking Bad suits, but only I know. Just horrendous. Hey guys, and welcome back. As you can see, we've got a bit of a different environment today that we're working in. We've got a really old oak built cottage and uh, this has actually been relocated from Sussex and dropped off here. Um, I say that like it was done recently, it was actually done in the 70s, which I find extraordinarily cool. And we are here today to do a load of work on it. And the work list that we've got is extremely extensive. So we're gonna be here for four days, or actually eight days, but just four days this week, working through some of the stuff that we've got prepared. So we thought we'd just film it and do day by day, task by task, because it can be extremely different. I'll show you around. All right, so here we are. So this is just one section of this amazing building. So this barn was actually built, or this cottage, I'm not sure what you'd quite call this, was actually built in Sussex. It's been relocated here in the 70s. They're just redoing it all. So there's a size comparison, there's Reuben. So you know, it's at least three feet tall, at least. At least. Um, however, it's a thatched roof. Now that's interesting probably for a lot of our viewers because I don't know if you get thatched roofs in the parts of the world that you may be watching for, but in England, in the countryside, it's quite a common thing, especially with barns and things, a common roofing method. However, that does bring different challenges. Some insurance companies will require either arc fault detection devices or, like in this case, they want you to have um, all cabling, especially inside the loft, inside metal containment. Um, and that's so that if a thatch nail goes through or whatever, it doesn't damage the cable and also the mice, etc. And I guess just the risk of fire is greater because if that catches fire, all of that straw on the roof, is it straw or hay? I always get them too confused. I think it's straw. I think it's straw. Yeah, but it's usually straw thatch. Okay, good. So, so. The, the roof is going to kill the turtles. Yeah. Right, um, well that's unfortunate. It's way more flammable than a normal tiled roof. I'm not going to bother showing you the list because we've got a huge amount of work to do today and we haven't got the cameraman so I don't want to basically slow down and I'm sorry for that but I will still try and show you what I'm doing. So we've got a fan to go right up there and a fan to go right up there. It's quite hard to show scale but trust me it's pretty darn high. So we're going to crack on building a scaffold tower. I've not actually built this type before, so this should be interesting. So we'll just set up a time lapse and there'll be lots of scratching heads in 4K. You have tools in the way. Possibly. No way. Lee's going to be so excited. What have you ordered? Uh, M12. Is that M12? You ordered some M12 stuff? With your own money? Yeah. I didn't even know you were getting paid. Are you, no. of, le are you of legal no. age to get paid? I've got, I've got a side hustle going on. There you go. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, it's nice to see you've got some tools other than screwdrivers. Oh, wait. You don't. <laughs> what do you think of our scaffold creation? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the yeah. pro, mate. <laughs> I think you should go up there. Go on, cl do you want to climb up there? The thing is, right, it looks scary, but it's kind of appropriate to the times. Do you know what I mean? Because when this thing was built, like, in fact, it's probably part of the planning consent that you lose a few small children in the process of building it, because that's what would have happened back in the days when this was built. Like, to be honest, by the standards of the 1870s or 1730s, whenever this was built, Ruben's middle-aged anyway, he's had a good innings. I've never used a ladder like that before, but... It's like a broken ladder. Okay, nice, nice. It's opposite day. <laughs> Is this your first time up a scaffold tower? King of the castle. <laughs> King of the castle. I have a chair. Hey, mate. It's pretty stable. It's pretty stable. It's not bad. <laughs> That's a lot more stable than me. Um, right, so the thing I'm wondering is we've got to get lights on these beams. I don't know how we can get to that one there. We need like 
scaffold built across there. I mean, I could stand on that, but I also do value my life slightly more than whatever that light is worth. Only very, only a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, not yours though. You could jump that's, up. That's true. Okay, so plan. Now the scaffolding is built. Let's see what the loft is like above here. Um, conveniently, the hatch is just there. So if we will go PPE ourselves up and then slide into the ceiling and have a little look what it's like. The only trouble is we have to be so careful because really the proper way to do this would be for me to be 500 miles away from the job if you were really concerned about health and safety. However, I'm here. The proper way to do it would be to have a bird's cage because like, seriously, that's what it's called. Right. It's okay. called a bird's cage. He doesn't believe me. Scaffolders slate him on this comments below. If you're a scaffolder... Mate, they're going to slate you. Oh, I'm joking. Scaffolders don't have the internet. <laughs> the most basic of trades. Um, they definitely won't watch YouTube and they almost definitely wouldn't watch posh people on YouTube and you're posh. Right, so the proper way to do this really would be to have a birdcage built so that if you fell through that ceiling, you just got a short fall rather than a nice soft landing on some very, very old stones. Um, however, we are not. We have not got a bird's cage. So, do not miss the joists. <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> you will be slightly less useful than what you are now in a physical sense. Are you sure? Maybe we could even, I mean, I don't know how strong that is, but when we're doing this light, we could also harness up to that and use that as like a rescue plan. But we'll go above it and have a little look. Come on, Ruben, show off your suit. <laughs> we could do some sick, what is it you kids are using nowadays, TikTok. <laughs> you could do some sick sequence with that. Guys, if you've not found our TikTok yet, we have a TikTok and there is a video of Jordan doing a, uh, a dance on there, which did make me chuckle. So go find that. Oh my, <laughs> flashbacks to the broken coccyx. <laughs> go on, do the Blink-182 album cover. Do you know it? No, blow the, into it, no, it? that's the, the where you pinch the glove like and let it snap. Oh, okay. Mate, come on, get with the times. Do you feel like one Indiana Jones? No. Oh, <laughs> mate, do you know what I see immediately? Here, past the camera, a big fat sleeping wasp. Oh no. Yeah, and now the reason that worries me just there. The reason that worries me is I had, I had an encounter in a loft the other day at home. I was just going up a loft, my loft at home, to get my uh, camping gear down for the road trip. I saw one wasp just on its own like that and I thought I'll be all right. Just ignored it, cracked on. I'm up in the loft for about 30 seconds and then there's a few more wasps and then there's a few more wasps and before you know it I literally had a swarm of wasps. I ended up just jumping out the hatch and it was quite scary. So now I am definitely on edge when I see them. I mean, I don't see any others. Oh, I've just foreshadowed. Why did I say that? Whenever I say that now, all I picture, Nathan's clever editing, yeah, me going, I don't see any others. And then I just see the end cut of footage of me it's surrounded by wasps. Like, I think we'd see them buzzing around, to be fair. And I don't. So as you can see, it's all been done in Copex and there's some crawl boards and stuff. Oh mate, I do see another one. Oh no. Yeah, I do. Oh, I don't know. I know I sound so sissy right now, but that was so scary the other day. Okay, no, I see a third one. Nah. And I'm telling you, I'll wake them up. I'm so heavy footed. So yeah, there's loads that I can see. And although they're asleep right now, I, th I fear that my crawling, hot breath, etc., is going to wake them up. I prefer a pest controller come in, I think. Right, so let's see what's inside these switches. So while the customer is just checking the loft, I thought we'll just keep busy. We're going to uh, just check this um, switching this side, because this switch was supposed to be a two-way for some lights on the other side of the hall, but it's not doing anything, and I can see there's nothing connected there. I'll have a look, see if the cable is maybe been bought through but it's not connected or if it's just not been bought put through at all maybe that's some horrendous wiring on the other side of this wall right that's bizarre because you've got the cable this side 
connected up, but it's not connected up on the other side. Okay, so this is for the spotlights that need a two-way. These spotlights around the arches, I'll show them up that one in that corner there, on there. You see them coming on and off. This needs to be two-wayed, but what's bizarre is there is actually a two-way wire in here. It's such a, oh, that's such an ugly, messy switch box. We might have to tidy that up a little bit. It looks like there's loads of cables coming through here, but I can't tell what they're doing or where they're going. I'm very confident wiring switch banks. It's quite a basic thing as an electrician to wire up. <laughs> Looking at this, like, what on earth? I haven't a Scooby-Doo what, they what they've done there. So obviously you've got your feed in there, just coming out of this common. And then you have got a two-way going off. It looks like it's going straight through. It must have just been lost in the wall or run to somewhere else. Maybe it's been run to over here or something. Ah, right. That is a problem. This has already been wired. They wanted a two-way switch to the other side of that door. There is a two-way um, wire, so there's a three core and earth coming over to here. But now, because that is the feed there and this is over here, this would need to be made an intermediate switch. Um, which on the wiring diagram is the little X. He knows about this, he's just yeah. been doing it in college, sweeping around. And then we need to get another feed from here back over to there. But that's not gonna be <laughs> that's not gonna be possible really. So the only option I can see is using quinetic switching, which is the wireless switching, which actually would be quite easily doable because they do have a um, like an MK module that you can use for that. And that just uses kinetic energy to send a signal to a little receiver box. It has like 100,000 clicks on it. Can you hear him spraying the boss spray in the loft? Okay, so unfortunately I don't think he can have one there. You can't have the feed switch as a middle switch. It will, you, you'll be able to switch it, but it won't work right. For an intermediate, you need to have that as the middle and this is the end of line, which makes no sense. What I would have done, oh, actually, maybe I can. That wire that goes to that box there from over here, I'll have to extend, run through to here, and then run another wire from here through to there, so that it goes point to point to point. That's complicated, but that is one way that would actually, I would be able to work it. The only complicated thing then will be how on earth do I get a cable through? into that section there. Okay, I'll have a think. Right, so we've spoken to the customer and um, the customer wants to just leave this basically rather than risk that drill through. Because what I was thinking was drill through that side, drill through this side and maybe try with the ball and chain and pull it out. But I can't guarantee that I won't hit anything that's inside this cavity or inside this wall because there's a lot going on. So he preferred for, for the risk versus the convenience of the switch or changing it all to kinetic switching and we're just going to leave this for now. So we've got all these stray wires here which we've got to disconnect. We've been told they've been made safe. So I'm just double checking. Oh no. Yeah, 230 volts. They're supposed to have been made safe but I thought it'd be better to check it before Ruben um, sticks his fingers on them. <laughs> Good job we checked, eh? Right, so that's seemingly Live, that's also live. But where are they going to? That one does. No, it's not switched by any of those. Maybe that. No. Okay. So, the side of lights is just under that stairs area, which is bizarre because that should all be brand new. So, there's no reason for that to be connected to that unless they've reused existing feeds or something. So I was wrong about the date of this place. It's actually um, 1600s built. And they reckon that from this joint here, which is just amazing. There's one thing I do love about England. Uh, no, there is new wires going in here. It's actually quite a nice job as well. Side of lights. I think they've all been labeled as they come through, so. I was hoping that there might just be an old feed in here and a new feed where maybe they'd done a partial changeover and um, hadn't removed the feed yet, but no, the feed is still there. A new feed, so that means it must be connected via a junction box or something above the ceiling. We'll just have to carry on investigating. I reckon this one 
there's a cable coming through a joist just over here. See, why didn't they just do this when they had the ceiling down? Do you know what I mean? Why would you leave stuff connected? It's all of the day is uni lights, unicorn light. <laughs> you have to hold it on your head like that. Yeah. We really need to get out of these breaking bad suits, I'm telling you. <laughs> we don't even need to wear them right now. Okay, so that's old colours there. So is this just a junction box up here? Or has it been done properly? I don't know. Let's take one down and see. You'll find the link in the description below. Also, for people who keep asking about our boots, yes, they are really, really good, as previously mentioned. And yes, we'll also, ouch, put the link in the description below. We have a discount code for the boots. And while we're at it, we'll put the link for the trousers in the description below as well, because people are always asking us about the trousers. Annoyingly, ow, it goes through a joist here. So there's a joist just there, and that cable goes through it and down. So there must be a junction box inside of that wall. No, they're just, they're brand new. They're done straight in, straight out. It's a bit of a head scratcher, this, I tell you. And that's just my nits. That is, that is really strange and also mildly inconvenient. It wasn't recording. Where's Max when you need him? <laughs> it wasn't recording, I don't believe it. We just had a wasp incident, a wasp related incident. Ruben grabbed the camera. Well, you can see evidence of it here. Yeah. Ruben grabbed the camera um, to record it and uh, yeah, we were talking to it, presuming it was on, but it wasn't even on. Where did the wasp go? Maybe we can go down and. Reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> the moment's gone. Lift this up. Mr. Spider, attack. Right, um, there's a junction box here. That is for the fan. What else have we got? Got, oh, a dead wasp. We tried playing Harvest Moon to the wasps up there earlier to see if that would send them to sleep, but it didn't work. They really are mutant creatures. I said, there are some very big wasps up here. Jordan says, don't worry mate, wasp nests should be pretty much dead this time of year anyway. Maybe if you go down and give the pipe, the cable a wiggle, yeah. you might be able to see where it goes through. Because this should be pretty much in line with those switches. There you go, so we've got all the flooring up now. Um, and we have had a cheeky lunch down the road. I actually bought packed lunch, but Ruben forgot his. How the world, how the turns have tabled, as Ruben says. Let's see if we can find the feed that runs through that way. Just be really careful, even when you kneel down, that you don't kneel down on something. There's that. And there's that. I love ripping out old, cruddy, unused wiring. As you saw from the Barnard Castle video, even when I'm doing like a, a rewire or something, I always prefer to remove the old cables if I can. All right, so we're just going to carry on tracing these out and ripping them out. There we go, got all of these disconnected, so Let's do a really bad edit. You ready? Flawless. <laughs> there we go. So that is, uh, that's all labeled up. I need to sort out some of this mess. I think while we've got this floor up, we might as well make the most of it. And we're adding some lights and bits on the wall downstairs. So I'm gonna get my cable tongue. I'm really sorry. Right, here's the problem, okay? Job number one is electrician, job number two is a camera person, operator, person do things in front of camera. I've been a bit lax with um, the filming. There were so many Wago boxes in that all over there, so I've just been removing them all and tracing them all out. So I found one of these cables, which is uh, that one. I cut them all differently so that I know what they are, um, but only I know. So th that is this one here. I have no idea why it's there. I don't think I can reuse it, unfortunately, because the next cable I need needs to go that way and off and so this is gonna be too short for that. 
These two cables are live when I turn the circuit breaker on and I cannot figure out why they're live. And there we have it, there's the start of my uh, my issues. Okay, let's get a nice close up of this disgusting switch. What I'm going to do, because seeing as I've opened it, I'm gonna tidy this up because it's just horrendous. Okay, let's do another really bad jump cut, Are we ready? Ruben, I have sent to go and do a little job on his own <laughs> and he's been gone for a while and he's been awfully quiet, so I'm just gonna go check on him. Oh dear. <laughs> his job was to change the light switches over. It's that bead of sweat coming down his forehead. And let's add some CSI lights to add pressure to him. Okay. He says there's a method to the madness, so. Oh, I see what you've done. I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> Have you put the little notches on them with your Sharpie as well? Yeah. Oh, I see. You're doing, he's doing switch wiring at college tomorrow as well, so great practice. We'll update you as the situation unfolds. That right there is a power stance. Go and do your most powerful power stance. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> that screams authority. <laughs> Well done, Ruben. That was amazing. Yeah. Your first full switch. I'm really proud of him. No help. Cool. No. Let's tidy up and get in the van. Thank you, Jim Hook. And that is us done for the day. Oh no, <laughs> lights have gone off. We've done pretty much all we can do there for today. I didn't want to start any more meter jobs because it's five o'clock. And also I've got to do a quick call out on the way home. I will be back tomorrow filming properly with Max so hopefully part two of this video should be with Max but it's a really cool project as you can see like I'm excited because it's just something a little bit different to what we usually do I think the finished result is going to be awesome because the customer is a complete perfectionist which I love because it enables me to be a perfectionist with no complaints if I take a bit longer labeling stuff up and things did someone just call us is it just me or do you think this is so spooky with the fog it's a little bit spooky. It is so like ethereal and creepy. And I just heard a woman say my name. I'm just a mad fan. Just one of the artisan groupies. It's come as standard now everywhere we go. CEF, you just got <laughs> just throwing themselves at you. Again, thank you very much, Jim Hook. We are loving them. Tim Tam Slam to the stars. They are amazing. They are definitely better than the English penguin. So I really appreciate that. If there's any other countries with your ethnic snacks send them over and we will definitely test them. Tomorrow we'll try and get a Tim Tam Slam on camera. Um, today was a little bit rushed because I was filming myself and I had loads to get done. Oh, another exciting thing. Customer said to bring a chalk bag. Because he knows I do a bit of climbing. I was thinking, bring my chalk bag. Well, I didn't know he knew I did a bit of climbing. I'm thinking, what does he want to do? Are we doing some power lifting <laughs> or some, uh, some bare knuckle boxing? But no, it's because he has a climbing wall and he inside his garage so that is definitely going to make part two or part three of the video after work we're going to do a bit of climbing here so stay tuned for all of that to come <laughs> <laughs>